will be hosting a Q&A session right now. Um, I, I go internet after 10. Did you guys Sorry. This has actually been a really recent conflict in my house, like as recent as last night. Um, and my mom asked if she could use this example, and I said no, but now I'll use it. I can explain. So last night I was using the, my computer at really late at night, like midnight, and she came into my room and said, I'm trying to sleep, and I can't sleep because you're on the computer. And I said, really? I didn't know I couldn't be on the computer. So then she said, oh, go to bed. And then she took my computer away. And then so this morning, she said, oh, you know, there was a misunderstanding. And so we talked about it. And so if a parent limits internet access, maybe like arbitrarily, like they just do it and there's no talking about it, then I would feel, and I think a lot of teachers would feel really resentful. On the other hand, if you talk about it, uh, with your team and you come to an agreement, like I came to an agreement with my mom this morning that there would be no internet use after midnight or we would put the computer away or at least, you know, try to make it as you know, convenient as possible for the other person so that they can go to sleep. Um, then the team will feel good about that conflict, that uh, resolution and they'll want to honor that agreement. So it's really important to talk about an uh, internet limit or a computer limit and that way the team will want to honor that. Okay, um, so for me, um, my parents never did this, but uh, it's because actually I never stayed up past 10 or 11 till last year when I actually had to work. Like, sophomore year, I actually went to bed at like 10 or 11, which is kind of unheard of now, and which I'm actually really surprised. Um, but for me, if that were to happen, I think I'd be pretty, you know, really angry. Um, I think I would want to know the reason why as to why I couldn't use internet, because unfortunately nowadays a lot of uh, homework homework assignments, they're actually posted online now. So like, oh, some of the teachers will be like, oh yeah, whatever I posted online, that's the homework. And sometimes, you know, after you get back from, let's say, sports and you're doing other activities, you don't get back until 9 or 10 and you won't be able to, you know, write it down. So that's my personal feelings. Um, does anybody else want to answer that? So there are a lot of parents in here who are definitely on a different culture. I'm actually from closer to your generation because I was born in America. And so there's an obvious, like, what is encouragement? You know, like, encouragement from an adult, from my parents, from Asian parents, right? <laughs> Sound really different and maybe goes off the wrong message to an ABC or someone from our years. So what exactly is encouragement for you from your parents that you actually see and value that? Like, okay, that is definitely encouragement, not like, not like, oh, I'm not doing enough, not good enough for you. It's a good question, actually. For me, I think encouragement is when you can get your parent to, like, understand you. I mean, I feel like when they encourage you to do something, it's because they're supporting you. And, you know, like, even when you mess up, they're not going to, like, nag you and, like, yell at you. Like, for example, if I have, like, if I got, like, a bad grade on, like, a test or, like, I didn't do well, if, they're, if my parents are going to yell at me and like for that, even if I spend a lot of time studying for it, you know, that, that to me that's not really encouragement. That's just like, oh, you just want me to get a good grade. Like you don't care about like how hard I try. You know, that's like for me that like breaks down like my wall. But, but when things don't happen, when like I don't do well and they like still tell me like, you know, I still love you. Like I can see how hard you tried. You know, like I'll take you to Starbucks. You know, like even like, even if you mess up, but they like some, your parents will bring you up and like, you know, like if you're, if I'm feeling down about something and they somehow bring me up to me, that's encouraging. Like that makes me feel good, and that actually like makes me like. you actually encourage your uh, child or something like that, you actually have to show them that you actually respect them so you can actually see them eye to eye. Because if your encouragement is, seems to be like without any respect at all, or you don't have any mutual respect between the two, you the, you know, encouragement or like what you say may, you know, fall on deaf ears. I want to join the fun. <laughs> Alright, um, so 
so like similar to like like um, my dad has been cutting a lot of fruit with me, a fruit for me. But like since I've been working on college apps, um, my dad's been joking like college apps just finished. He's like my time of ser servitude is finally over. So I know he's always been behind me. And you know whenever I accomplish something, and you know my parents are happy for me. You know I feel that they're behind me and always supporting me. Because when you know when they're happy, because I'm happy, it makes me feel really happy. So it's a circle of happiness. <laughs> yeah, I understand there's a, there might be a cultural gap between parents now, like, I don't know if, how many of you have read Amy Chua's Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother, but I read it over the weekend and, uh, not this week, but I read it a while ago, and uh, reading through it just really helped me understand what, like, I don't, I don't know how many parents here, like, have the traditional kind of, like, uh, Chinese parenting, but what from my read that she, she really wants her kids to succeed, but she does so in a way that the, ki the kids don't understand that it's her wanting to succeed. They think it's just her forcing these, uh, these kind of responsibilities on them and they have to achieve these. And I feel like, um, and this is when they happen to me all the time, but I was, uh, my definition of encouragement is my parents helping me all the time. It doesn't matter if they're shouting at me. It's just that um, I know that sometimes like I, I do speech and debate, and sometimes when I don't always uh, do well in speech points, I'm always uh, when I go back in the car back home, not going to finals or my finals, I'm always depressed. I think to myself like, oh, I did so badly. And on the way back, my mom she just encourages me. She says, it doesn't matter how well you do. It's just like how much you, like you try hard, you did your best. And like sometimes when I don't succeed, I just don't want to do the next time because I think I'm not going to win it, uh, succeed again. But my mom always wants me to um, keep trying. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> I just want to thank my mom for her help. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> She's always uh, supporting me. <laughs> Find what you like to do or what you don't like to do. <laughs> or any technology to find your likes and dislikes, what you guys like to do in your free time, what you don't like. Um, for me, how I, the question was, if, if I remember, got the question correctly. Um, usually if I'm interested in something, I tend to look it up on Wikipedia or something like that. I research a lot into it using the internet. Like, for example, for a while, I was I really wanted to learn how to do like a Rubik's cube type of thing. So I so I went on the internet and I was like, oh, how do you actually solve one of those things? What are the techniques you can do to solve it? By the way, I still don't know how to solve Rubik's cube. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, I guess it's just that the internet helps you like, um, it gives you the tools to learn about what you're interested in. When you find out about something, you can research it. Or at least I have a friend who got into Photoshop recently, but he couldn't like he couldn't go to classes. But like my dad told me like, oh I should go to classes for this type of thing. But he went on YouTube and he looked up a lot of videos about Photoshop about Photoshopping and then he became a really good Photoshopper. Like we we're both in yearbook and he does all the designing and stuff. So through, through things like that, that's how you can find out um, things you like or dislike. <laughs> well for me, um, like I've I I've been playing games on the internet for a while, and so I think that kind of got me interested in how games were made. And so, um, like, at my class, in my school, they teach Java and ABCS, so I took that. And then over the summer, um, I've made, I coded my own, coded and made my own video game. So that's kind of been something that I've been, been interested in because of like what I've been doing on the internet, like playing games, and that's something that I wish to pursue in the future as well. Okay, and then um, my older brother, he's a uh, sophomore at Berkeley, and so like he is like very musical and he really likes to perform. So then he likes to watch videos on YouTube of like performances or like guitar players and stuff. And then so he wanted to buy a guitar even though he didn't even know how to play one. And then so he bought it and he never took any lessons. He just learned how to play guitar on YouTube. And if you listen to him, he is really, really, really good. And I'm just like, wow, how are you so good? And he just learned it from YouTube. But he like, when he picks up his guitar, he can't put it down. And like, you know, that just shows like, wow, like he really found a really great activity. And he got inspired from videos on the internet, like on YouTube. You can just like 
like some things are really inspiring and then like because of that he's like so talented in this like yeah so yeah <laughs> So the question was, for those who couldn't hear, was basically, as she had said, you know, social media can be a detriment to health, you know, you spend too much time on the computer, you're staying home, you're getting fat, you're not doing anything. And so how do we as teens get away from, uh, get away from that, you know, social media? How do we get off the computer? How do we get out and be active? Alright, so it's pretty much the same thing as, like, getting off the addiction of, like, something like drugs or, like, alcohol. You can't immediately just quit it. If you do, you probably have a relapse and have withdrawal symptoms or something like that. Even though, yeah, you can actually have withdrawal symptoms from staying a long time from like habits, like staying on the computer for too long. Like, um, so basically, the best way to do this is to slowly wean the person off of like whatever they're addicted to. So, like, um, you know, like start cutting down on time, like your kids. Um, so, a couple of months ago. I spilled water on my laptop and it broke and so then we took it to the laptop shop and I said okay we can fix it it'll not be that expensive but then it ended up taking six weeks so then I didn't have access to a computer for six weeks and then I realized how much time that I normally had spent on the computer that now I didn't have a computer to so it was a really like rude awakening and then I was really amazed that I had spent so much time on the computer before and then now it seemed like I had a lot of free time. Um, so that was, it was kind of hard at first because, uh, you know, sometimes I thought, oh, well, what do I do now? But uh, when I got my computer back, I kind of went right back to it. So I realized that just not having a computer isn't really, like, fixing the problem of internet addiction. Because once I got it back, then I just went right back to that level where I was before. Um, so I think it's kind of a natural, sometimes for teens it's a natural maturing process when they would spend a lot of time on the internet and eventually they would realize maybe